So at last we arrive at the long promised S3 vulnerabilities, known for being a possible opportunity to compromise some of these other things like the flash protection and the SMM protection. To be discussed later is to be discussed now. So back in 2013 at MITRE, while we were doing security research on BIOS vulnerabilities, we were running a tool we had developed called Copernicus, which both did a dump of the BIOS and also checked the security relevant bits. And Sam had noticed that there was actually a situation where sometimes some models, according to the initial Copernicus checks, those models were just, you know, fine and fully protected and there was no problem. But sometimes they would actually show up in our full data from, you know, analyzing all the internal systems. Sometimes the same model would show up as vulnerable for no particular reason. Eventually we tracked it down and found that it was caused by going to sleep and then waking up. So if someone closed their laptop lid and then opened their laptop lid, it would show up as vulnerable. So we didn't really know what was up with this. We filed for a cert vulnerability number. We reported it to Dell. Dell said, thanks, they fixed it. But they never exactly told us how they fixed it or where it all applied and things like that. So we didn't really dig into this further. We had a whole bunch of other vulnerabilities that we fully understood what was happening. So this one kind of got lost for a bit. Now in 2015, after the main sleep-wake vulnerability had been found, Pedro Velaca noticed something very similar to the previous Snorlax vulnerability occurring on a Max. So this was a situation where again, if the Mac was put to sleep and woken up, all of a sudden a bunch of the security bits seemed to be unlocked. Now Kitty Mo named this Prince Harming instead of Prince Charming because of the poison kiss waking you up from sleep. And this was a thing where Pedro unfortunately decided to uh, accidentally zero day Apple because he had seen that we were going to be talking about Apple systems applicable to this sleep attack that had been presented the previous uh, December, uh, December 2014. And he just assumed, well, you know, they must be presenting the same thing happens on Max and hey, look at this, I detected it too, I found it too. But uh, of course, if he found it, and he knew that this, you know, he mentioned explicitly in his blog post that he knew we were going to be talking about this uh, later on at DEF CON. Well, then there's kind of uh, no real justification for just trying to jump ahead and say, I found this too, but I know that there's no patch available yet. So anyways, he assumed that what we were going to be talking about at the conference was what he found, but it was not. He had found a new vulnerability. And so basically this particular vulnerability didn't occur on the models that I had in my personal possession, which is why I hadn't found it either. Anyways, what does this all mean? How can it be the case that systems just go to sleep and then wake up in a vulnerable state? Well, that's what we need to investigate how sleeping works to understand. So we're gonna start out our S3 attack tree and the attacker wants to write malware to SMRAM or spy flash. And to do that, they can just see if they go to sleep and wake up and if it's magically unlocked. So that's the data that you could derive from those two examples. But once we understand more about how the locks work, then we can understand what exactly is going on. So to understand that, we have to understand ACPI, Advanced Configuration and Power Interface. This was the 1996 era successor to the APM, Advanced Power Management, which was the technology that was in use for that SMM port B2 stuff that we saw before. Eventually this spec came under the maintenance of the UEFI forum around 2013. And uh, that's because this spec has to do with, you know, how to put the system into lower power states and to bring it back up into full power states. And always this basically involves the uh, coordination between the operating system and firmware. So ACPI defines a few different power states. S0 is the main active one that you normally think of as your computer just working. S3 is sleep, so that's typically if you just, you know, say literally sleep on some particular system or, you know, says low power mode, close the lid, that's typically going to go into S3 sleep. S4 is then hibernate or deep sleep. That is the situation in which you basically store all of your RAM contents to the hard drive and then you restore the RAM contents after you wake up. So that's much slower than S3 sleep. S3 sleep, the most of the stuff is powered down but the RAM is still refreshed. So RAM is capacitors, needs power, and so you just keep powering it and then you can have a quick refresh. And then S5 is the notional powered off. Although it may not be 100% 100, 100 powered off, 
uh, they make a distinction in ACPI from the literal, literal mechanical disconnect of power versus the F5 power state. And then there's some additional states which are sort of uh, in between states, not quite as low power as S3 and consequently will allow you to resume from this lower power state much faster. So for instance, modern Macs don't actually use S3, they use S0i3. So let's dig into this sleep power state. Oh, what was that? Spooky. Okay, so modern hardware is a bunch of different little chunks of hardware. And if you dig in even deeper, this is what it looks like on the silicon. It's a whole bunch of different transistors doing a bunch of different functionalities. So it would be nice if you could power off the transistors that are not actually in use. That would give you much longer battery life. Your CPU would not be you know, consuming so much power all the time. And indeed, in one of Intel's books about active management technology, what we now know as the management engine or converged security and management engine, they talked about the benefit of AMT being able to continue to execute in lower power states. So back then it was a Northbridge Southbridge architecture, uh, GMCH, Global Memory Controller Hub and IO Controller Hub. So consider everything powered on, it's obviously using the most power possible. Now, if it goes into S3 sleep, so you close the lid and the CPU powers down, the CPU can power down, but they can still selectively keep some chunks of hardware still powered on. So most of the RAM can go into just self-refresh mode, so it's using less power. And then just a little bit of the RAM can be used by the Intel management engine. It can stay awake, and the whole point of uh, Intel AMT is to allow for essentially remote management, remote waking things up, patch them, let them go back to sleep. So there can be chunks of hardware that are still powered on in lower power states. So they make a distinction between S3 M1, so management engine is on, and S3 M off, where you do go all the way down into S3 sleep, the management engine is also powered off, and only the RAM is in self-refresh mode. So that's, you know, a very low amount of power usage. Not, of low, not as low, of course, as S4, where you don't even self-refresh these, you just store all the contents out to a hard drive, and then you don't have to keep anything powered on there. 